because she was so hung up on bread. I'm seeing Jennifer Bowers now. And she's coming to Gainesville uh, Monday and Tuesday. Okay? The same time back in Washington, D.C. Jim, Betsy, and Claude are listening to some 1951 Dean Martin song in which he did a duet with a female singer Michael Center, Santos. I'm glad my boy's in Gainesville. I don't want him at the ranch by himself where Brad can go there and suck up to him. Jared is going to have a hell of a better summer than he is. He'll be stuck in some bank in downtown Odessa while JR is going to find new friends and life in D.C., Jim said. None of us can. None of us can stand Brad, Betsy said. But we tolerate him because we love JR. Enough about Brad, Claude said. It'll kill the mood tonight. Claude changes the track over to Frank Sinatra's Blue Skies. It reminded him of a summer in 1957 while vacationing with family in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Oh, those nights in Baton Rouge, Claude said. Bars, beer gardens, riverboat, casinos. Betsy goes to bed, and the British American call girl, Lori, Laurel Roby, walked in. By day, she was peel attaché for Jim. By night, a call girl. Jim takes her and disappears to the east wing of the house into one of the bedrooms. A kiss and tryst ensues. He would shower in a nearby bathroom afterwards. Kim Pim Easter. Jim and his uh, call girl emerged from the East Wing. I'll wire you the money, Jim said. Mel, fetch her a cab. It's on me. You're a dog, Jim, Claude said. Not a dog, a Mac Daddy. Just don't tell my wife, Jim said. Piece of crap. Give me a break, Claude. I'm very drunk. Come on, March 12. Mark, well, like, uh, oh, yeah, that's right. March 12th. I think. I don't know. No, it's swollen. Of course. Oh, please. Okay. March 12th. Flying from Galaxy S20 Fay 5G. March 12th, 12.02 p.m. in the a.m. Central. On the triple six, Betsy wakes up after two hours of sleep, suffering from abdominal pain and diarrhea. She turns on the light and walks across the bed, from the bed to the table, to find her little uh, tonic that she takes for these for times like these. She turns on her cassette player to play uh, San Antonio Rose by Bob Wills. She can feel the general rocking of the boat. 
quit. Her son had given her some Dramamine to avoid the motion sickness uh, of a water before they got on the boat. She also insisted that when she was on deck, she had to be fitted with a life jacket, seeing that she was afraid of water. It was a fear that her husband, Jeremy, could never understand. When they started dating in 1937 at uh, the Turner Lake in Roanoke, Texas, 1 or 2 a.m. Eastern. Meanwhile, the guard desk at the Hendrick Mansion, two of the guards are talking. Joel, I really don't appreciate you calling me in from working with my sick kids to do graveyard shift. Now what the heck is going on? I saw Jim Hendrick do something. But you mustn't tell a soul. On pain of being fired. Immediately, Joel said, uh, pulling his gun. I can keep a secret. I saw this pretty young British American thing walk into the mansion a few hours ago. And this in this skippy white dress. I saw her walk over and and talking seductively to Jim Henry. Oh good Lord. What did you do? His wife is there. Hush. And I said, tell no one. Oh, fine. I saw him walking with her into the east wing of bedrooms downstairs. That's far away from the northwest wing where he sleeps. He disappeared into this bedroom. And then they came out talking to each other six feet apart. He told me more that now he told Mel here to fix him catch him a cab. Shut up! Mel fumed uh, screaming. How many times do I have to tell you if we double cross him then we are out of a job. We will be blackballed from Washington. Now zip your trap! 4 a.m. Eastern. Jim wakes up in his master bedroom. Uh, he's suffering from the willies in the morning. Uh, Chef Adele and Jacqueline would not be coming in until 6 a.m. But he knows he has a Mr. Coffee Maker and the uh, in one of the back lounges. And so he walks toward the back of the house and makes some black coffee. 4.55 a.m. JR is sitting in the living room by the fireplace Having had a rough night, he's had a million thoughts going through his mind. He wondered how uh, Christine would adjust to Washington high society with her parents. And would she fall in love and leave the family behind forever? Such things had been in the back of his mind for almost five years. In the summer of 1989, against Betsy's wishes, Jim sent her with a friend named Tracy to Los Angeles, California. Tracy's family, which had been farmers in West Texas, 
now lived in a mansion in Beverly Hills. However, JR noted that once Betsy found out that uh, Tracy's parents were living in witness protection, she ordered Christine to be placed on a charter plane and flown immediately to Dr. Odessa. Christine was ready to return home, though she had fallen in love with a uh, child actor, Harris Josephs. Well, he's her work. Is that she would eventually fall in love with her second husband, who fought, who, though a simple rancher, looked and acted a lot like uh, Joseph's. 8 a.m. Central. Curtis come by the house with a dozen donuts from Starbucks. All charged to uh, uh, Betsy Shark MasterCard. The Shark MasterCard was established in 1985, but then it was reinvigorated in 1990 when it was incorporated um, in Hearst, Texas, owned in part by uh, Wells Fargo until Wells Fargo took it over totally in, two, in 2013. 8 a.m. Central. Now in Gainesville, Jenner and his cousin Joe are talking about the past six months. You know, it was only six months ago, Jr. when you started dating hot and heavy with Karen Crowder. Now I hear she's vacationing in this uh, rifty neighborhood who works to help you, just said. Four and a half months that I dated her, uh, it was something else. Grandma was uh, Grandma was a devout Christian. Grandpa was a pacifist, and her mother and sister were some diehard feminists. That's why I think uh, she broke up with me because, quite frankly, all personalities she had she had a lot of time with me. No offense, JR, but I'm willing to bet that your dad did a little trick of taking women lightly in Washington. I have no illusions, no illusions about my father. I love him, but I was angry the summer I was 15, and he brought in this young. Uh, country singer who was developing a career in, in Nashville that really had an impact on me. At 9.30 a.m. Central, Jail is alone in the living room when his cell phone rings. It's Jim. Hey, Dad. I'm ready to call. Hey, Junior. How's life in Gainesville? Jim said. It's okay. You just don't have the... Um, same feel as with uh, you and Mama. Your Jared said. Well, it's snowing, and I've had some work to do. Then I'm going to be talking to your your uh, Mama for a while. So I'll call you sometime uh, for a long time. JR, when you get back to school, take care of yourself. <laughs> Damn. Hope you enjoyed listening to the JR Hendrick Texan Night. If you like what you hear, please subscribe. Become a part of receiving a. Uh, the end of the story. Take care. God bless you.